Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to show you how you can create a smart prop in DAS Studio. This is a question from one of my supporters, Paul. Hello, Paul. He says, hey, I found some old content for Victoria 4, specifically some props like, you know, sunglasses and jewelry and, you know, maybe a hat and all that sort of thing. And it's made for Victoria 4, but I'd like to use those things on the Genesis 8 figure. How do I do that? Currently what happens, I select Victoria, I load in a prop and it kind of parents itself onto the exact position where I want it. But of course, if I load the Genesis figure and load the prop, that doesn't happen. How do I do this? Well, glad you asked because it's something I've written an article about a few years ago to which I'll link in the description so you can read up on that if you want. I'm going to show you how to do this with a homemade prop that I'll create from a primitive here. Let's go and bring in a model, perhaps Genesis 8 point zero dev load and then we'll fiddle with her so um i don't have anything for victoria for so i'm just going to go and create a primitive that will become kind of a wristband and i'll show you how to save that as a smart prop so in your victoria 4 case you would just go and load this in and it would kind of be around in the scene somewhere and this is what i'll essentially create now here with a new primitive i'll say a torus well, 20 centimeters is probably too much, but it'll be it'll be good for demo purposes. So it's white. My character is gray. That doesn't look great. Let's go and make that a bit more colorful. I'll go and select my Taurus here. And the default surface, I'll just make that just the base color. I'll just make that something like blue or like, you know, like that's that's a good color. I'll also instead of Taurus, I'm going to rename it a wristband. And I'll put that, I'll just say wristband L because I'll put that on her left arm. Let's go and move that into position. So it shouldn't be on the ground. It should be somewhere near where the item is going to be used. And that's probably around her wrist. So this is still fairly large. Um, yes, we need to make that a bit smaller. So this is step one. You bring in the prop and then you go and move it into place where you'd like for it to be. And you can spend as much time on this as you like. I'm going to be hopefully very quick about this. At least I'm trying. Not always successful here. You can, if you want to, uh, while you're moving this and you think, hey, I'd like to just move this along kind of diagonally. How do I do that? Well, it'll be, it'll be on the tool settings tab. And you have with the universal manipulator selected, you can pick what coordinates the manipulator gadget should follow. So currently we're doing world coordinates, but you can also use local coordinates. And then this thing changes and that makes it a bit easier to position that once you've done the initial bits and pieces. So I think, I mean, you know, there's obviously work to be done, but let's, let's just assume this is good enough now and this is my awesome piece of jewelry that I brought in and I'd like to use it. Now if I go and select my Genesis figure now and if I were to go and move her arm around I can see that the thing isn't actually moving with the arm which is you know that defeats the object it's supposed to be staying on the arm whilst while she moves the arm I'd like for the wristband to move as well. So what you need to do is you need to figure out what part of the body this is simply by clicking on it. And then you'll see that in the scene tab, it'll have selected something. In my case, it's the left forearm bend. In your case, it might be different. If you have a necklace, that'll be the neck upper or the neck lower. Or in case of earrings, that'll probably be the head because we don't have ears separately rigged. In my case, it's this thing, the left forearm bend. And what I'll do here is I'll go and grab my wristband from the scene tab and I'm going to left click and drag it onto that left forearm bent. And when I do that, it just goes and pops into place here. And it means it's now parented to the arm. So the cool thing is now, if I go and select another part of her body and move her around now, my smart prop is now parented and as such moves along with my figure, which is great. That's exactly what I want. That's kind of step one to put it into position and you can now use it. But of course, if you were to load in a fresh figure, you would have to do all the positioning again and you'd have to then, you know, do the parenting again. And thankfully, we can save this prop out now as something that will snap into place in this spot on a fresh version of the Genesis figure. 
And here's how we do that. So we don't select the figure for this. We select the item that you've brought in. So in my case, the wristband. I'll go over to my content library. This is a brand new thing that is just an empty folder that I've mapped here earlier. I'm going to go under to the prop section. That's just another empty folder that I've made inside the empty folder. And I'm going to go and save this as a smart prop asset. This can't be done via the little plus icon. So we're going to have to go up to the file menu and select file, save as support asset, figure prop assets. And if you select that, then we get to see another, first of all, the where we're going to save this dialogue. And that will be, I'm trying to put this into my library here. So that is, I think, in runtimes, conversions, props. There we go. That's it. And I'm going to call it uh, wristband L, just so that it follows the same name. And now I get this little dialogue that pops up here. So it's some of it is not that relevant to what we do, namely the metadata. We don't really need to save that as a metadata, but if you wanted to do that, pick the correct thing for that. So in my case, it's a prop. It goes on the arms and especially it goes on the lower arm. So you could select that. I'm probably not going to bother. You can just go deselect that if you like. Assets directory, this is which library this is going to go into. That's this. This is mine. I'm just going to leave everything as it is and just hit accept. And that'll now create myself a little thing down here in my library that is just this item saved properly because it infers that by the selection that I've made. If I go and delete that out and I'll go and select my Genesis figure and then go and double click the thing I've just put in there. Watch what happens. It goes and puts it right back into place and it also is auto parented on my figure. So that's, that's kind of good news because that's that's what we want. I can go and delete it again and show you one other thing. What happens if my figure is not selected? So a moment ago I was loading it with the figure selected. Now I'm just going to click this right space here and nothing is selected. If I go and double click my item now, watch what happens. It appears to move into the same position, but it hasn't parented itself to the figure because Das Studio didn't know, hey, this is, oh, this is the figure you're referencing. Sorry, I didn't know. So what happens now if you go and move her arm around, it will now now not snap into place. But if you were to select the figure first and then load this item, it'll snap back into place and you can select the figure and then move it around. And you know, smart prop is functional and operational. And this is how you can do this for literally every single item that you have for either a different generation figure. If you have something for Genesis or Genesis 2 that you'd like to use with Genesis 8, then you can follow the same process. Or if you have something that is completely homemade in Blender or in something else, then you can use this process, just import it as an OBJ, move it into place, parent it and save it out. Or if you have something from a previous figure generation, you can do the same thing. Just load it into the scene and then move it manually into position, save it out. Bob's your uncle, Betty is your aunt. I hope, Paul, this was useful. I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you liked it, and I hope we're going to see each other in the next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>